It's worth having a try, sir. It's better than sitting around here waiting for that savage to make his next move. We shall build a ship. Did you really think that I would let you all live as you came? You will go alone with him. Do you think we'll ever see him again, sir? God only knows. You have deceived me. He is the future. Through him, your name will live forever. No, mother. There can be no future without Shark. Do you expect me to lend an ear to a bunch of savages? If you find it hard to speak to savages, well, then I suggest you resign. You have killed me. Save my mother. Oh, my guilt will become your own. There is nothing more I can do, Baba. No. The end of Akazi is beyond my medicine. No! <laughs> Nothing that anyone can do to change that. 
Is that saucy tie? Yeah, Boba. It is so. Swallows, there is no truth. There is no truth. There is no truth except the reality of your death, mother. <laughs> But you will not die alone, mother. The promises of life, promises of youth. They shall die with you, mother. They shall die with you. great female elephant. It was deemed probable that the heavens and the earth would unite in bewailing her death, and thus the sacrifice for man would also be great. No cultivation would be allowed for the following year. No milk would be used, but as drawn from the cow, it should be all poured upon the earth. All women found with child during the year of wailing would, with their husbands, be put to death. All that was a promise of life and youth would be destroyed. The inhuman edict condemning the whole population to starvation and unnatural abstinence was, through abject fear, received with acclamation. And regiments of soldiers were dispersed throughout the empire to massacre all those who failed to obey. We were confined to Port Natal until Shaka, who quite irrationally was blaming us for his misfortunes, should decide how best to deal with the treachery of the creatures from the sea. I feared that if Francis didn't return soon, all would be lost. So many times in the last three years, I thought I'd never see myself like this again. And do you see yourself now, Francis? Well, that's an odd remark. If I think of the minutes, the hours, the days I spent hoping and praying for your return. And yet, now that you're here, I feel lonelier than ever. 
Because I realize that you may never really return. You've become like this image in the looking glass. Every detail of Lieutenant Farewell is there. Except life. Who owns that life? Shaka? Francis, I've watched you plunge headlong into ventures that would give cold feet to even the most brazen of men. Yet you've always survived. Because you have the capability of never taking yourself or the situation too seriously. You were always above the event, avoiding any real personal involvement. And it was that tongue-in-cheek spirit that justified your apparent recklessness that made you a winner. But it's different this time, isn't it, darling? You've cut loose all your emotional anchors. Your involvement is complete. Elizabeth, through no will of my own, I promise you that. No matter how well you play, you cannot always control the game in its entirety. Especially if your opponent is... formidable. You just keep upping the stake, and then suddenly one day it's too late to quit. But it's never too late. You still have me. Well, then I must ask you to wait until I'm ready to return. What news do you bring, Captain? The Governor's Commission had deliberated and reached their decision. Inasmuch as the Zulu Empire has no recognized diplomatic status with the Crown, an audience with Sir Charles Somerset has been deemed inadvisable. This is madness. So is your idea of ever thinking we could treat these primitives on an equal basis, Lieutenant. You and Mr. Wilkins are requested to board a ship for Plymouth at your earliest convenience in order to offer His Majesty and the Admiralty clarifications regarding your involvement in the Zulu affair. Oh. A court-martial, hmm? A clarification, Lieutenant, as to where your true allegiance lies. Yes, you've just made that very clear for me, Captain. I must warn you, Lieutenant. Save your threats, Captain. I'm no longer under your jurisdiction. I'm Zulu, and I'm staying here until your government recognizes our embassy from the Emperor Shaka Zulu. Most unfortunate, Lieutenant. A promising career to toss all that away for some ungrateful savages. I couldn't agree with you more, Captain. Men like you and Lord Charles aren't worth it. Excuse me. Mom? What the blazes is going on here? It seems that the soldiers have invited their friends and relations to come and stare at us. Well, do we leave now? No, Tim. We stay here. If need be, until we rot.
You ever see anything like it? Bloody vultures. What are we trying to prove, Francis? Yes, they've seen us for what we really are. As a race, as people. And even if Lord Charles agreed to sign a treaty this very afternoon, I'm afraid it would be far too late. Our credibility has been somewhat tainted. Feeling helpless, aren't you? Simpson, Harlow Simpson, South African commercial advertiser. Have you come to report on the circus, Mr. Simpson? Not exactly, Mrs. Farewell. I leave that eclabbered task to my less ambitious colleagues. The only story I'm interested in is yours. The confessions of a hero's wife. Don't you find that rather seedy? Madam, when you stop feeling sorry for yourself and your husband, perhaps you'll come and see me. He needs you, you know. Being a hero is no fun if nobody knows about it. Mr. Simpson! So, we would be excused for thinking that some heinous crime or some dastardly act had been committed, or that these people have been used in the perpetration of treason or an act of war against the colony. <laughs> but not so. Well, the party, under the gallant command of Lieutenant Francis George Farewell, has come to offer lasting peace between the Cape and Sharker's empire. Mm. A peace we so desperately need for ourselves and our children. Mm. This reporter begs to know why Sir Charles Somerset wishes to remain so obstinate. Mm. Uh, bring him here at once. Sir? Come in! Salafans, Baba. Goman, Axon is going to be a fool, Goman. Baba, what's the last time you passed in? Is there a problem, Mr. Farewell? Would it bother you very much, Lord Charles, if we sat on the floor? Under the circumstances, I suppose that would be acceptable. Yes. Now, Mr. Farewell, would you state precisely and concisely just what it is you expect from me as the governor of the Cape? The gentlemen of the press are waiting. As you know, Lord Charles, I and my men have been serving His Majesty in Natal. In the course of the three years in which we've been amongst Zulu people, I have endeavoured to consile Zulu interests with those of the British government. Now, there have been many difficulties, of course, most of them related to questions of custom, such as you've just witnessed with regard to the seating arrangements. 
Um, basic misunderstandings which affect communications. But more recently, I have had the good fortune uh, to win the confidence and the trust of the Zulu king. The result of which is the king's strong desire to show his goodwill by proposing an alliance with Britain. And for that purpose, he has sent Ungomane Mkobolo. Mkobolo. He has sent his prime minister to represent him. You spoke of questions related to customs. How did Sharker communicate to you the word alliance? I don't follow you, sir. Did Sharka instruct you to go to the governor of the Cape to seek an alliance between the Zulu tribe and the British Empire? Were those his exact words, Mr. Farewell? Alliance, he did say alliance, not concurrence or cooperation. Does Sharka wish to join the British Empire? Or does he wish to maintain his sovereignty? In which case, does he wish to establish ties with embassies? Or does he merely wish to meet Georgie and enjoy some kaffir beer? <laughs> Surely, it is not a question of semantics. What difference does it make? Excuse me, sir. What is it, Captain? You were saying, Mr. Farewell? What difference does it make if the word is alliance or agreement? The sentiment is one. The Zulu people are reaching out the hand of friendship. Friendship? Mr. Farewell, will you please convey to your prime minister that we have just received word that his king is marching on the Cape with his full military force. Mr. Farewell, your native friends have 24 hours to board their ship and leave the Cape. Failing which, I shall be obliged to consider their presence here as an act of war. That will be all, gentlemen. Mr. Farewell, a word of warning off the record. Men like you are invariably caught between two fires and rejected by both sides. You cannot trust these people. I think today's news proved that. Let them go. Save yourself. Too late, Lord Charles. I've sacrificed three years of my life. And now I must stop him. I have an investment to protect. You know what's happened? Well, the minute those reporters ran out of there, the news went through the crowd like wildfire. 
You can't play this game anymore, Francis. Shaka is not abiding by the rules. I've no option, Elizabeth. He makes the rules. No. Francis, no. I can't stay here. There's so many people relying on me. I, I have to go back. I have to. Well, how long this time? A few months? A year? Two? Three? What about us, Francis? What's happened to our game? I have to finish this one. Just like that. I just don't understand. He said he'd wait until the harvest. No, there'll be no harvest this year, Francis. Nandi's dead. He's gone mad. Quite mad. Well, I must find him. Where is he? Well, the army's marching southward. We should be able to catch him up on horseback. No, 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 no. You've all risked quite enough in this business. I must go alone. <laughs> Not in your life. I'm going with you. I'm as responsible as you are. Now, Henry, you know that that's not true. You know, and everyone here knows, that from the very first day that we arrived here, you have opposed my ideas. But let me tell you now that your ideas and your principles were very often far better than mine. This matter is between Shaka and me. nothing to offer. Now, we must end this madness. Tell Mopa to get his men to clean up the city and clear away all the dead. And let dignity be restored to the people. 
they've suffered enough. Da Basit. Da Basit. His eye, Febana, tell me, Febana, how do you trap a monkey? Well, a gourd is used with a narrow neck. Bait is dropped into the gourd. A piece of fruit or, or something shiny. The monkey puts his hand down into the neck of the gourd. And then he grabs the bait. And uh, then he's trapped. Because he can't get his fist out. Once he realizes he is trapped, why doesn't the monkey let go of the bait? Because his greed makes him blind. And what is he greedy for? Feban. Well, I, I suppose what he thinks he cannot have. And what new baits have you brought, Febana? Bring it here for this monkey to see. Something shiny, like the freshness of youth, of life, of the past. 
create your God again, Febana. My heart yearns for something shiny. And cozy. That yearning which has brought about everything that has happened was as much your fault as it is mine. But hating my people is not the solution. We must search for another together. Together. <laughs> no, Febana. You have proved that you are never with me. You're a man with no nation. You're a shadow. Go. I have no need for you anymore. Go? Go? Where? Where? have been Puma I hear thee The swallows have defeated the great elephant in Kabai. What are you talking about? On the day when our armies were ready to attack, when we shouted Sikit, there was no answer. The king was gone. Where? Does it matter now? Doesn't matter anymore. Must not meet with these men, Baba. It is dangerous. The whites are magicians, Chuck. They work with illusion. You have taught us to live in reality. If what they say is true, then the Aisangoma possesses powers we cannot ignore. Beware, Baba. Those who wish to be saved by magic often become its servants. If the wife offer you wings, it is because they wish to make you their victim. How can the conqueror of nations be bewitched by a handful of jackals? You have given them land, wealth, and the status of generals and chieftains. All I ask is, what is the great elephant getting in return for his generosity? The power of their knowledge.
the spurt of the blade speaks. No. The spirit of Shark speaks. So be it, son of Sulu. Take the spear and with it, like the sun, cast your powers to the ends of this earth. You are Sulu. You possess the heavens. Heavens belong to Zulu, and Sharka is their son. Sharka is their son. They are sons. I love you, Sharka. Love. We are incapable of that emotion, mother. All that we feel, all that we have felt, is vengeance and hate. Hate. And now, Gabai, what now? For the good of the nation, you always said. Omane? Brothers, I never thought you capable of such decisiveness. And so now, after all these years in Kabai, I am once again in your hands.
the swallows have won the garden. Bob, burn everything. Let nothing remain that reminds us of Shaka.